Hi everyone, and welcome to the first video of our IBL tutorial series. In this video, we'll show you the basic ins and outs of the UI and how to set up stage lights in LiveFX and pixel map them on any kind of content. After watching this video, you should be perfectly prepared to grab the trial version from our website and take the first steps in image based lighting with LiveFX. In this video, we presume that you're familiar with DMX and the concepts of patching fixtures into universes and channels. Let's start by creating a new project. I'll just give it a name here and not worry too much about any other settings at this point. Once we enter the project, we can either import a clip from disk or start a live capture via the live setup button. The latter is especially helpful when LiveFX is not the content provider for the LED volume or green screen psych, but instead receives a live image signal from a camera or the media server as the source for the stage lighting. In our case, we'll just import a couple of clips to use with our setup here. As you can already tell, the construct tab down here is where any importing, exporting and media asset management takes place. The middle tab labeled LiveFX is where we do all sorts of compositing and color grading, as well as projection mapping in LiveFX Studio. This tutorial, however, will focus on the third tab, Stage Lights. So let's start with a quick tour around everything we have in this tab to work with. Starting with the fixture stack over here on the left. In here you can add new fixtures, either from a GDTF template you can import, from the open fixture library, or by simply creating a blank fixture that you can map out channel by channel manually. You can also do this via the corresponding buttons here inside the fixture menu. Let me quickly add a fixture from the open fixture library here real quick. I'll choose an every sky panel with profile number 4. You can also simply duplicate a fixture using alt drag or the corresponding button down here and even group fixtures together. Like this. Switching to the universes tab it will quickly show us the ranges for all fixtures and whether there's a conflict or not. Obviously since we just duplicated all those fixtures they currently have the same universe range right now. But we'll take care of that in a sec. Before we get to that however you might wonder what exactly video fixtures are. Video fixtures are lights that are not driven via DMX but through an LED processor, sending an actual image their way. Let's add one video fixture in here as well before we continue. Now let's look at the four menus we have down here, starting with the protocols menu. In here we have several different tabs to take care of different protocols to control fixtures with. When using one or more USB to DMX interfaces, we can configure them here in the corresponding tab. LiveFX also supports ArtNet to control fixtures that support it. And of course, SACN is supported as well, not only on the output side, but LiveFX is also able to capture DMX data via SACN, for instance from a lighting console. This is a separate tutorial, however. To receive SACN data, explicitly enable the input and select the network adapter to use. Note that SACN and also ArtNet do work through Wi-Fi, but we found that a wired connection gets more responsive results and especially for the discovery of ArtNet nodes, a wired connection is preferred. Now for the fixture menu. In here are all settings for the currently selected fixture in the fixture stack, divided across four tabs. In the first tab, we can patch universes and DMX channels. The DMX channels are already patched according to the profile we selected earlier when adding the fixture using the template. But we can of course reassign them to anything we want, including static values, animation channels or incoming open sound control live links. For a complete overview of the available channel types, please check the user guide. Note that if you click the button in the second column, the channel editor opens with more details on the channel, for instance value range or selection options. The repeat in universe and repeat universe parameter are particularly important for multi-pixel fixtures like for instance the quasar rainbow lights. Same for the sample grid configuration in the next tab. We'll look at them in greater detail in another tutorial. In the second tab we have parameters related to our sample boxes here in the viewport. If I grab one and move it, you can see the corresponding parameters change down here. When a group is selected, all fixtures of the selected group can be moved together. We can of course also change them numerically by dragging across the numbers or clicking into them to simply punch in a new value. 
When dealing with multiple video channels and using a so-called switcher node, the input parameter here lets us select which video input of a switcher node to use for sampling this particular fixture. Down here is an important setting, the sample format. This sets the filter to be used for sampling the color inside the sample box. The default is Langshus, which will result in a very smooth sampled image. In some cases, however, especially with lots and lots of fixtures being controlled and sampled, you can select the linear filter to keep up performance. Linear will only sample the four center pixels of any given sample box, and this way works much faster, albeit more coarse. LifeFX has a built-in DMX raw data viewer, which you can call up from down here. In here we can simply set the universe we want to monitor and the viewer will show us what's going on on each DMX channel. Note that while the DMX viewer only updates every second in order to keep things readable, the actual DMX data updates at the frame rate of the underlying clip. Lastly, we can set a fixture to a fixed color, using this button and the color picker next to it. In that case, the sample box will disappear from the viewport since we're not sampling anything anymore. Note that we can also pick a color from the image right away. On to the grade and animation tab. There are different ways of tweaking and adjusting the sample color for a fixture. One way is to grade the full image using the color tools in the LifeFX tab. You can even use freeform layers and keyers to more specifically grade a portion of a clip. Alternatively, you can also grade the sample color of an individual fixture. This grade is applied after sampling and filtering. We have RGB and master gains, as well as hue, saturation and lightness. The dimmer parameter is available for fixtures that feature a DMX dimmer channel. Over here we can define up to 6 animations, which can then be linked to DMX channels here in the fixture patching tab. Note that you first need to patch the animation channel onto a DMX channel before you can set keyframes in here. This will be explained in a follow-up tutorial. Lastly, the Color Transform tab. Here you transform the sample color, which is in the color space of the underlying clip, to the specific color space of the fixture, either by selecting one of the predefined color spaces and transfer functions, or by entering your own conversion matrix. This is a topic for a more advanced tutorial. In this tab you can also limit the volatility of the sample color by setting a minimum and maximum range. You can either clip the sample value above or below the range, or scale the sample color within the range. Before going to the mixer menu, let's quickly go over some settings inside the config menu. In here you can decide whether you want all fixture settings to be stored and applied globally within our project, or rather per shot. Note that the fixture setup itself, number of fixtures, grouping and fixture channel layout are always stored per project. Channel values, fixture sample position and grades however can be stored per clip. This way we can easily switch between scenes with different lighting setups. Let me quickly create a version of our shot here to simulate another scene and change the grade or move the fixtures to different positions in the viewport. If we now switch back and forth between the two versions, you can see that our fixture settings change. By the way, any fixture setup can be exported and imported via the corresponding buttons down here. Next, we can configure the fixture overlay shown in the viewport. All or only the selected fixture, the fixture name and the resulting average sample color of any sample box. Note that in case of a very high number of fixtures, displaying all overlays and sample colors can affect the playback performance of the system. In that case, consider disabling some of these options. To get a better indicator of the current playback performance, you can bring up the performance graph by either using the hotkey Command or Control plus F1, or using the corresponding button here in the LifeFX menu. This will show you how fast the clip, or live feed, is playing inside LifeFX. The maximum playback speed is always limited by the lowest frame rate set for any video I.O. output that is active, which you can find here in the settings video I.O. menu. To test how much slack the hardware of any given system can give you, you can simply disable all outputs here in the monitors menu on the far right, then switch to the general menu and set playback speed to free run. Now LifeFX will go as fast as the underlying hardware allows. Note that the free run setting is volatile, 
if you just switch to the Construct tab and back into the Live Effects or Stage Lights tab, it'll be set back to the original frame rate. To also test whether the sampling of the fixtures in the Stage Lights tab has any impact on the playback performance of the clip, you can simply stop the sampling of all fixtures via the pause button here. Back to the config menu. The last setting in here is the option to enable lighting console input and the patching of DMX channels, effectively linking controls on the lighting console to any of the virtual fixtures here in LifeFX, or even playback, grading and light card control. We will look at this in depth in another tutorial video. Alright, on to the mixer menu. It's a more comprehensive view to control all fixtures and very straightforward. To the left we have the master level control, which lets us dim all fixtures at once. To the right are groups and fixtures as per our fixture stack. Each fixture can be dimmed, disabled, soloed or set to a fixture color from here. The level slider applies to the dimmer channel of all fixtures that have one. If a fixture has no dimmer channel, the master gains of the sample color are adjusted. Clicking the color button shows us the grade panel or when a fixed color is set, the color picker. The button below lets us access fixture specific DMX channels. The folder icon is only present with fixture groups and lets us step into any group and tweak the fixtures inside separately. To step back out, use the up arrow button on the left. Lastly, let me show you what's behind the QR code button next to the master level slider. A small window with a QR code pops up. You can scan this QR code with any device on the same local network as LifeFX or simply click the link below. This will start and open the HTML web server interface included with LifeFX. It shows the same controls as the mixer menu, but if called up on an iPad for instance, it is much more portable and accessible even when not at the LifeFX workstation, but walking around inside the LED volume. That's it for an introduction to the IBL capabilities in Assimilate LifeFX. Stay tuned for more follow-up videos. Bye.